Well, you know that uh, this train is has been uh, recently inaugurated. It, it's just three years old and um, has been starting in the 2001 as a deluxe service and uh, to honor the, dis the discovery of Machu Picchu it was put the higher Bingen service. When was Machu Picchu discovered? The discovery of Machu Picchu was in 1911. So, uh, you know, actually the train service was started as a service to, to connect Cusco with the, with the Jungle Valley. The touristical service was started much, much more later. Mm -hmm. And um, actually the, the first tourists coming to Cusco had to share, you know, the local trains with the pigs and the animals they were bringing from the jungle all right. and all the vegetables. Up on the top and of fruit. the train. Yes, no seat numbers. No seat numbers. Yeah. When you look through the windows, it looks like you would look in pa to paintings, you know? Beautiful. Oh, it is beautiful. Yeah. Lourdes, would you like to tell us something about your people? Okay, my people. Uh, all people born in these highlands of Peru still belong to the Quechua race, you know? Uh, the people of the Incas. Because in, in Quechua, Inca meant just king. So the, the ruling class was the elite of Incas. But still nowadays we are Quechua because we are born in these beautiful mountains. And we are still keeping some of the original features of the Native American people in this area. You know, that's why uh, we have very dark hair, dark skin, dark eyes. And people in the countryside still speak Quechua, the Quechua. native language. And yeah. not, not so much Spanish. No, actually the children have to go to a school to learn Spanish. They speak just Quechua. I'm just going to say to you, Lourdes, that the, as visitors, the very high altitude affects us for a few days. Obviously, you people are very... How do you cope with the altitude? Our lungs are bigger, our hearts are bigger, and uh, in the meantime you are here, you know, you get more red blood cells. More red so, blood. yeah, so you are suffering the, the altitude uh, effect because your lack of uh, uh, red cells. Lourdes, we're on a beautiful train, the Hiram Bingham train, on our way to Machu Picchu. Would you like to tell us, because we want to show this back home in Ireland, a little of the history of your people and Machu Picchu? Okay, so Machu Picchu belongs mainly to the height of the Inca Empire. You know that Incas have started in Cusco by the 11th century, more or less. But uh, all the archaeological sites that you can see nowadays belongs to the height of the Inca times, the 15th centuries. I mean that uh, Incas were not actually the creators of all the great knowledge applied in the architecture, gold and silver work, pottery, but Incas were inheritors of a great knowledge because the Peruvian culture has started long before the Incas. When we talk about the Incas, we talk mainly about the last stage of the Peruvian history, between 12 to 15 centuries that unfortunately was interrupted uh, in a violent way with the arrival of the Spanish invaders. But the Peruvian culture dates from at least 2,000 years before Christ. I'm talking about uh, great civilizations that have started at that time, domesticating animals and plants, you know, uh, having a great uh, urban plan, great knowledge, even for astronomy and uh, uh, economy, you know. So, Incas is just, I would say, the last stage, the best expression of the local culture. And Machu Picchu belongs to that time. 15th century is the time of glories. And it's believed that Machu Picchu could be used as the last refuge for the beautiful virgins of the sun, beautiful Inca women that were secluded in places uh, like were like nunneries just to, to brew the chicha that was the fermented corn beer that was the ceremonial um, drink and uh, these women also could be uh, making beautiful weaving, you know, the tunics of the high priests and all this and Unfortunately, these women were uh, raped when the conquistadors came. 
everywhere they were coming, you know, violence was spread and destruction. So it's believed that could be used as the last refugee of the Virgins of the Sun as well. So Machu Picchu is really hard to describe with words. That's why still nowadays it's considered a Peruvian, a national symbol. Uh, from the discovery in 1911, many photographers with sophisticated cameras arrived there trying to capture the wonder of that place. Believe me that no picture makes any justice. Because it's a place that you need to feel. You know, you can, you can still feel the strong presence of Incas in this magic place. And this is what you are going to experience. I was also reading a little of the size of the stones and the size of the structures, Yes. and it seems amazing they got them so high up. Does anyone know how this was done? Okay, they have used everything that modern nature, that mo that modern nature was offering them. In Machu Picchu, you know that the high mountains are a white granite formation, so they have used the white granite there. As well as in Cusco, they have used the limestone because that was the type of stone that they had available and in other areas, the basalt or any other type of rock. But the amazing thing is, you know, the transportation, the shaping of the stones, knowing that Incas were lack of iron, lack of steel. You know, they had to shape the stones one by one with heavier stone tools. So that's really something that cannot be repeated even with the, with the uh, modern technology that we have nowadays, it's not possible to build uh, like, uh, you know, the Inca architecture. That's nice. Yeah, because they were concerned about the seismic activity and that's why they made solid, solid buildings. Mm -hmm. But just with the stones fitting together with no cement, it was an artwork. It was not just, you know, solidity and uh, to be prepared with, with the, for, for the uh, seismic activity, it was something else. It was really people who enjoyed who, who, uh, what they were doing at the time. I think it must be more than that because there seems to be a much higher knowledge of engineering than with all our tools we have now. There seems to be an ancient knowledge that's gotten lost. Yeah, uh, you are right because, you know, Incas never, never thought on each one. They were, it was a different style of life. Reciprocity, sharing. There was not private property, so it was mainly, you know, to work for the others, to, to support each other. Kind of feelings that are being lost with a very occidental way of mind imposed by the conquistadors at the time. But, uh, uh, you know, you are right. It's mental and a spiritual strength that you find in every piece of rock that you find in those buildings. Lourdes, there is a myth in some books that many of the great civilizations just simply disappeared off the face of the earth. And a lot of people think a lot of Inca may just have done the same. Well, let me tell you that in this case, it was not, you know, just disappearing or, you know, blowing away. The local population, the Inca population, was totally decimated. Uh, the destruction that the conquistadors made was actually very bad. We are not even recovering, getting over of that bad experience. Because Inca rulers were all exterminated. You know that some brave Incas organized insurrections trying to recover the Inca power back from the conquistadors. What the Spaniards did at that time was just exterminate all the rulers. That's why they went all the way down to the jungle area where the last rulers were being, you know, fighting firstly, and they, they could get to Vilcabamba. Actually, that was the city that Hiram Bingan, the discoverer of Machu Picchu, was looking for, when by chance he discovered a new city. But uh, let me tell you, in this case, we know what happened. Yeah. The rulers were totally decimated, exterminated, and even, you know, the great Quechua population 
that at a height probably reached like 10 million inhabitants was totally decimated during the Spanish occupation. My God. It was like 300 years of Spanish domination and it was very bad period for the local people. 10 million? 10 million roughly, you know. But it was the decimation of the local race and the intermingling, you know. Mm. We are effect of a great intermingling. The Spaniards didn't have any problem to get mixed with the local people, but the local people was mistreated and decimated. So if at the end of the Spanish occupation, two million were left, it was too much. Two million people? Yes. So it was at the end like, a, like an holocaust, you know? Oh, yes. For the local people. Very definitely holocaust. Yes. If you see that the spirit of the Incas are still living in, in, the lo in the soul of the local people, it's because the local people have managed to carry on their traditions. Despite all the persecution and the mistreatment, they, they knew that they had to keep their traditions alive. Unfortunately, we still have Quechua people, you know, the area, all this area inhabited by, by the Indians, is part of the original Quechua race, the people of the Incas. But unfortunately, we don't have descendants of the ruling class because they were totally exterminated. Yeah. Yeah. But in the Andes, in these highlands, is where you can find, still nowadays, people that are far descendants of Inca people. Inca people. Even when some, with some percentage of intermingling, they still speak Quechua, they still worship Pachamama, Mother Earth, and they are still uh, running their traditions that actually go parallel to the Catholic traditions. You know? So the spirits of the Incas never left this place. You know, they are living in the soul of every single person living in this area.